Once described as a potent cosmopolitan cocktail, she's the only Polish singer to ever hit the top 40 here in the U.S. Please welcome Basha. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming. Oh, fun to be here. So you are certainly very chic. They can't see it, but you're all in this sort of uh, <laughs> knee length. Well, they can see the chic from the top up. Yes, of course. The talking head part. But well, you I have, have to live up to, <laughs> well, to the program. I saw you. Thank you. <laughs> to <Great>. your fame. <laughs> so now you were a little girl growing up in Poland. Yes. During the big solidarity days. Oh, and before. yes. How did you I discover this, this big talent of yours? Um, I had no idea I had any talent. I still don't know, but... <laughs> we do. <laughs> because some people keep telling me that I should do it. So, um, well, it had started that I, I actually sang always at school. You know, they, they made me perform on the school assemblies, mm -hmm. and literally since I was m maybe six years old, mm -hmm. and my family made me sing at parties at home, uh -huh. you know. I remember that when I started, when I, when I started to sing, and my family realized that I have some musicality, I. I sang with my back to everybody because I was too shy. And then my sister, who is two years younger, she sang duets with me. We both like held hands with uh -huh. my backs to everybody. Uh -huh. Did <laughs> but, you come from a big family? Yeah, my family, uh, the, the immediate family is quite small because there were four children, I suppose. Four, four. children, yeah. But my extended family is enormous. That's why, you know, occasions like Christmas and Easter are always the big gatherings, you know, the kind of Italian Mm -hmm. uh, you know, feeling because we we always gather together, and there is a very close feeling in, in my family. Is that common in Poland? I Big think so. Families? Yeah, I very think so. People really lucky. live together. I mean, the, the grandmothers and grandparents generally live with uh, with uh, families. In, in England, I'm not sure about America, but in England, people always move out from home, and and everybody lives separately. And and Christmas is something like uh, a little bit nerve wracking that they have to get together again. Mm. Sometimes not seeing each other mm. for the whole year. Not not such thing in Poland. I've, people mm. really love being close. And though, though they are not a very simple, uh, you know, they're very passionate people. So these occasions are never uncomplicated. And even in my family especially, <laughs> where people are, have very strong characters and, um, you know, it, 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 quite intense. Fireworks? Absolutely. Yeah, lots of, lots, of, lots of things get broken over Christmas. Like, you know, we actually unite and we, you know, we have to pray together and we have to break the holy bread and wish each other best things. So when that happens, all the animosities disappear, you know. Ah. It's, it's a great, great feeling, something I never experienced in England. I stayed for Christmas a couple of times. Yeah. It was never the same. I read that you said that you were you feared your father when oh, growing yeah. up, but he wanted you to be a doctor. Yes, my father, very very strict man. I, I often talk about him because I think he's he's not longer alive, but I feel sometimes that he's around me because uh, I have a lot of traits of his character, like um, quite determined, uh, quite uh, strong <laughs> character I have, and I'm a big organizer. He was like that, uh, but. I think I like people much more than he did. I think he was quite, uh, not aggressive, but uh, he had problems with, with getting close to people, even with his own family. I think we, we all lived in a little fear of him. You know, when my father was coming, everything suddenly had, was rearranged, you know, because mm -hmm. he lived in a different part of the house, and when he came to see us, you know, it was just always, always that trepidation, you know. A but visit uh, from the Pope. <laughs> sort of visit from somebody. <laughs> Yes, but he was a he was a good man. He could really make things. That's what I admired him for. Like what? Like, like he built our house, for example. He would wow. organize. He, we had a business. Uh, my family uh, made delicious ice cream, mm -hmm. and he was the head of this business. And and he really managed to keep things together. You know, it's just I wish he was a little bit more. Uh, affectionate with us yeah, that would yeah. that would make a huge would difference. that all families were more affectionate I different wish world yeah. now so you guys were making ice cream during yes. the communist regime is that legal <laughs> that was very See, unusual here, we didn't think it you was had a it. very unusual thing actually because we ha were one of the very few families families in communist poland mm -hmm. who had a private business which was very very unusual everybody had were 
uh, employed by the government, mm -hmm. but we had our own thing, our own little, it was like the beginning of capitalism, if you know what I mean. Because they, everybody wanted ice cream, I assume. But our ice cream was really spectacular. I bet. And, and my father never... That's probably why they let you stay in business. <laughs> Couldn't replace your ice cream. Well, my father, it's so famous, the ice cream. My, since my father died, um, the business kind of it really mm -hmm. disappeared. My mom couldn't really keep it up. Mm -hmm. well, you see, she needed that, my father's strength. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, people till now ask about it, you know. They ask when we're going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Where, what was it called? Oh, it was my father's name. Which was? Shalevsky. <laughs> Where was the damn Shalevsky ice cream? Where is it? They want it back. That's right. That's well, my, 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 my brother has a hi-fi store in the same place now. It's not the same. <laughs> no, it's great ice cream. No, no, no. Legendary ice cream. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to go get some ice cream. So let's take some, <laughs> a break and we'll be back with uh, singer Pasha. I'm glad you made it to the reunion. Back with singer, songwriter, platinum album maker Pasha. Now, you moved to Warsaw when you were 15, right? What did you hear growing up in Poland? What kind of music? Did you hear all the, the whatever the hit rock and roll from the U.S. was? And That's what people are always surprised about, because the great thing about Poland, in spite of the fact that it was impossible to get records in the shop, because, uh, first of all, our music in the record industry at that time was terrible. Mm -hmm. and, and the records that were available were very expensive. They were just imports from, from the West, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, that was out of the question. So the only way we could hear something new that was happening in the world was on the radio. And we had a really excellent radio. And uh, the radio was so accommodating that they would play whole songs from the beginning to end, sometimes the whole LPs at that time. Yeah. So we can tape. So I had oh. tons of records, tapes, so freshly like, leg tapes. The, well, almost. The, that's right, but it was p p completely legal of because it's from fine. the radio. That's fine. You know, so I had new releases almost the same week as they came out. And then you trade them amongst friends and everything. Well, my friends weren't as passionate about about mm -hmm. music as I was, mm -hmm. but they knew that uh, that if they need a, a par music for the party or whatever they organize. I was the main supplier, come and I was a DJ. <laughs> right, come to Russia. So now, how did a girl from Poland who grew up listening to American music on the radio mm. become influenced by Brazilian jazz? I know, that's another thing. I mean, I, you could, you see, the good thing about Polish radio was that they didn't just play top 40 songs, mm. but they would play everything uh, from jazz and, and Latin songs too. And sometimes when I go to Italy or, or Spain or France, people are surprised I know their singers, especially mm. older ones, because mm. when I lived in Poland, I listened to their music on, on Polish radio. Now, since I live in England, I, I lost touch. <laughs> Isn't it strange, really? So well, I, I, I was able to listen, listen to Astrid Gilberto, let's say, or Jobim's whatever work, uh, on Polish radio, and I knew their work very well. Yeah. So when I came to England, and I, I worked with a group called Malbianka, who had very Latin flavor, I was like, fish and water, really, because that's exactly what I liked. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised to find English people in this band who also enjoy that kind of music, you know. Yeah. And also, you know, um, when we play in Japan, let's say, people love Brazilian music. Oh, that's great music. I think it doesn't matter where you live. Mm -hmm. The music mm -hmm. is so nice. Brazil's very interesting in South America because it's the only country that has African influence in it. It's the only people that have black people from Africa. Absolutely. And, and so yeah. you've got a combination of the Spanish yeah. and indigenous Oh, Indian yes. and African, yes. so it makes the whole thing much, much oh. sexier and hotter. <laughs> yes, exactly. You said that when you came to America, you went first to Chicago. That's right. Right? Yes. Um, I stayed there for a year. And um, you immersed yourself in the whole, whole jazz scene in Chicago. Well, I, you see, that was a shock to me because it, it was my first trip abroad, really. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine that, that little town I told you about and the, the jump to Chicago? to Chicago? It was a a bit overwhelming, and I was, yeah. you know, I, 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 it took me a while to kind of get used to things. And but uh, it's a very human city, nonetheless. It's much more oh, human scale than, now than I, New York. Now I perceive it completely differently. Yeah. When I go, when I go <clears> there <throat> now, I feel Sorry, comfortable. at home, you <laughs> yeah. know. But that time, I remember being frightened. Sure, I was really scared. Everything seems so. Yes, the, the huge buildings and, and, and the, the opulence yeah. of opulence. everything. Absolutely. Ooh. You know, I also came just before Christmas and all this shopping, these decorations. 
I, I, I was frightened. And I remember, I remember that fear when I came back to Chicago and I saw the same buildings, the Hancock Tower, the Sears Tower. And I, I remember how different feelings I had for these buildings then. I, I'm very sensitive to, to architecture of, of places. I think mm -hmm. that's what makes me feel at home or not. Or not, exactly. But the great thing about Chicago was that I, had, I was able to see all my heroes almost any time I wanted. We worked, I remember in this Polish community club, we worked three, sometimes four nights a week. So mm -hmm. I had the rest of the week to see the concerts and see, see my wow. Aretha yeah. and, uh, you know, Stevie Wonder, yeah. Ray Charles, you know. Mm -hmm. I could not believe that I saw these people yeah. live, you know, yeah. just... Uh, it was incredible. We're going to come right back. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with singer Basha.